Carolina requested nine coaches. Uh, Bobby Sloak was one of them. Washington also requested to interview Bobby Sloak. Now, the whole timeline about all this stuff is confusing with the playoffs, like when he can and cannot interview, but he's been requested. Now, we officially have five job openings. You know, we have Vegas, Washington, the Chargers, the Falcons, and then today, the Tennessee Titans. Mike Vrabel was fired. We're still expecting at least the Patriots job to open. Um, I still think the Bears job is going to open. Mm. Um, and then I know we're going to get deeper into this later, too. And then Adam Schefter said something interesting yesterday on the Pat McAfee show about how, like, early exits in the playoffs might lead to one more shakeup. Dallas um, might be one of them. I was thinking Buffalo. I, yeah, th- I think he I, survived. I could see that. I could see, but I could see McDermott getting whacked if, if, they if lost the, in the Steelers first find round. a way to win in Buffalo. Yeah, the, the 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 place that the Bills have been at, you know, challenging the Chiefs for the AFC Championship, a first round exit to a team that's a seven seed, Mason I Rudolph. think puts McDermott right on the hot seat. Yeah, so I think we have, I think we have at least one more opening at a minimum with the Patriots, and then and then maybe one more or two more past that. For the most part, I think we're settled. But so Sloak's been requested for two jobs now. So, like, Bobby Sloak watch has started. Like, people do not want to see him leave for the most part. I think there is the the, the minority that is fine if Bobby Sloak leaves. Um, where are you at with, like, just your, your confidence that he stays? Well, I hope he looked at what Ben Johnson did a year ago. And, and I hope that he takes a page out of that book and realizes, look, it, it's one thing to be sought after, to be on lists, to be a candidate. It's another thing to realize that you have to be so picky and and you have to realize you're going to get other offers if you're good at what you do anyway. But if you're not careful as to the job that you pick and the personnel and the so situation that goes with you, right, it could be your last job. So with that in mind, I would think he also knows, hey, before I jump ship to another situation, I got a franchise quarterback in year one. I got guys around me that believe in me that I've worked with in the past in in D'Amico or a guy like Nick that has gotten to know me and knows he's going to give me what I need to succeed. So I think that if he looks at all that and then looks at what Ben Johnson did last year, hey, I'm going to interview. I'm going to get my feet wet. I'm going to get experience. I'm going to see what's out there. But at the end of the day, if I feel like any or all of those offers aren't better than a chance to keep building what I have with the Lions and get a better job the following year, then I'm not going to jump just because the bait's there. No, I think that makes sense. Like, uh, if it's if the right job's not there for you, you shouldn't take it. Now, you could also be wrong. I do, I do think like that Ben is... Johnson was wrong to not want this job, clearly. The Houston job, I agree with, but there were plenty of other jobs that, like the Denver job, you don't want that Denver job. No, you're right. I think there are there is at least one job that would be worth his time. I don't think he's going to get one of these jobs. I think these other teams are probably trying to pick his brain, see what the Texans did right, so they can apply it for their own team going forward. And for Ben's, for for Bobby Slovak, it's good experience for when this is a real thing for him in future seasons. But if Washington were to offer him the job, they've got a ton of salary cap and the number two overall pick, where he could get you know Drake May or Caleb Williams whoever doesn't go number one i think if that job gets offered to you that would be worth considering but i wouldn't take the, i wouldn't take the vegas job uh, i wouldn't want to go to new england if that opens up yeah, but there. you're missing the one that i thought you'd say which one the chargers yeah he's see, already got herbert i see i he's got he's receivers got no, herbert's got no weapons though i mean keenan allen's 32 mike, mike williams. williams is always hurt uh, austin eckler's uh, past, past his prime quentin johnson Mitch busted. johnson can't catch but i mean they got him high with the draft pick but see like honestly i i think so this is where i don't think bobby slowick's gonna leave and part of it is because i don't think he will be in consideration for the Chargers job i think they're gonna aim too high for him like i don't think, see, bobby, I think that's true like the, so you have five job opens five openings right now i believe the raiders job is done you think pierce gets it i think pierce gets it they've played really good football since he took over they've already made this mistake once they made the playoffs with rich passaccia um after they fired john gruden and then now the raiders have played really good their defense has been very good under antonio pierce i think they're gonna stick with him unless they get hardball i was gonna say Think about in most situa- in most other situations, in any other market with st- stability and ownership that really stays out of it, I think you're absolutely right. And I think that when Crosby and and uh, Adams come out and say your two best players on offense and de- defense say you want to keep the guy that's gotten this th- thing going in the right direction in his job, most owners listen. Most GMs would listen. You're talking about Al Davis' son. You're talking about a Davis that, aside from having no fashion sense or clue what a hairstyle is, he wants to be sexy. He wants to have that boom. He's in Vegas. 
So to me, the two biggest candidates for him, if he's not going to stick with Pierce, are Belichick and Harbaugh so because my, he wants to make a splash. My only pushback to that is that just a couple years ago, out like the Davis family had to trade Khalil Mack to the Bears because they did not have enough money to put into equity to pay Khalil Mack's contract. And now they have two coaches that they owe like $20 million for a year for the next five years to Josh McDaniels and to John Gruden. I just wonder, are they going to make another one of those major big splash long-term investments when the last two have lasted like 20 games combined? But time out, Joe. When that, you're right. But when that came up, you were still playing, in not knowing where you were going to be. You were, yeah, in, Oakland, were in Oakland, and you were yeah. everything was in flux. That's true. Now you got this massive new toy of a stadium in a money spending free for all like Vegas, which is again why you need the big sexy name. I think there's two coach. Look, I think the majority of the coaching uh, opportunities that are out there, they're going to make the rational football move for the best young up and coming coaches or coaches that they think in a Vrabel's case can actually take them to the next level. I think there's two jobs. One because it's it's the the, the style of the owner, the Raiders that you need sexy and a big boom and splash guy because he did it with Gruden. He'll do it again, and that's why I said either Harbaugh or with with Belichick. The same thing for other reasons is why the Chargers need that too. If not for an ownership that's so hyper cheap that they were constantly trying to find that young guy on the cheap that could be good, kind of like a quarterback before his first big contract. I think that the Chargers in L.A. fighting the Rams, trying to get – Everything, like trying to get a fan base to show up more for their games than USC or the soccer team or other things. You have to be relevant in your own city. And in order to do that, you have to finally get the Spanos family to open up the checkbook and go, look, you moved from San Diego. You lost and alienated that fan base. You obviously haven't built one in LA. And you, it's like the Yankees and the Mets. You have to be better than the other team if you're going to get respectability and credibility. And in a way to do that is... If I get Bill Belichick or if I get a, a guy that's proven to win in the NFL like Harbaugh and I can take the talent I already have and do something with it. Yeah, I think I think Harbaugh is likely to be the Chargers coach. So like and that's and that's part of the reason why I don't think Slowick is going to go anywhere because I think Pierce stays with the Raiders because they don't get Harbaugh. I think that's a factor into this. Harbaugh is a better candidate than Slowick. Uh, Mike Rabel is a better candidate than Slowick. Yep. Ben Johnson is a better candidate. Bill Belichick is better. Now, that assumes the Patriots' job is open. Um, and that could be Vrabel. That could be Gerard Mayo, which, like, we've always known. The one that I think is the most interesting, though, honestly, because this this franchise just pretends to be Houston, is Tennessee. Tennessee yeah. But not just because, like, they take oh, they yeah. hire Tim Kelly and they bring in DeAndre Hopkins and they bring in Andre Johnson and they wear the Oilers jerseys. But their general manager, Ron Carthon, was with the San Francisco 49ers yep. from 2017 to 2022. Bobby Slowick was with the San Francisco 49ers from 2017 to 2022. So, like, to me, that's the one. You're right. That, like, I'm most intrigued by. Now, but if you're Bobby Slowick, why in the hell would you take that That's job? a great question. Because now they're, they're completely, like, you guys said, like, you have to be careful because it could be your last job if you take the wrong one. What about the Tennessee, the state of the Tennessee franchise makes you think they could compete in the next two to three years? I mean, See, I'm that's not the taking thing. it. But, but also with that, when you're looking at because Ron Carthon is the exact reason why I thought Slowick's going to be considered. But you're stuck with Will Levis because, look, they, they're enamored with him. So regardless of whether you like it or not, they're going to try and tell you make the most out of Will Levis. He doesn't exactly fit the same kind of mold as a C.J. Stroud. He wants to get out and run. He wants to be a linebacker with a cannon. And and that's dangerous for an offensive coordinator that's trying to run the kind of offense that he's running. And he doesn't have the weapons to do even close with speed and the other things the way that, that, that Houston does it. So if you look at it, you say, yeah, they want him, but should he want them? Because that's the one that I said, if, if you're only getting that, you stay away from because look, it looks great on the on the 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 media guide and everywhere mm -hmm. else where it says head coach and the money's going to be great and you better get a lot of years, but you may not win and you might be a guy that's under scrutiny one or two years in and they're saying why haven't you done this and then you're going to go to the same guy that you've been working with in San Francisco going well if you give me this job you better give me the players to run that offense the same way or we're both going to fail. 